Let's try not to talk about politics in today's podcast. At the end of the day, there's a federal election that's coming soon. Well, before October 2025 anyway. If I had to guess, it'll probably be spring, but let's see what happens. Because of that, there's a lot of policy changes that are coming into play. And you've probably seen a few of them, namely the CMHC rule, which now you're allowed to have up to $1.5 million. And let's talk about some of the policy impacts and see how it's going to affect the real estate market and what my predictions are going to be in 2025. Look, I get it. The Toronto real estate market is confusing. Whether you're a new or experienced investor or just looking for a home to raise your family in, join us at Broadview Table Talks as you sit around the table with my friends and talk about the real estate and the ever-changing market in Toronto. All right, so let's get into it. The new policy changes with the CMHC borrowing rules, it used to be capped at a million dollars. So a lot of purchase prices would be 999, 999.99. The new 1499, 999.99 is a new 9900,000, 289s. Anyway, that's gonna happen December 15th. So if you start writing agreements now, it's not going to come into effect. It's gonna be December 15th is when it goes into effect. And then from there, they still have to underwrite it and make sure that it does work. Of course, the minimum down payments, you might've seen that graph floated around with the minimum down payments are for the various levels of purchase prices. Well, let's get into some of the numbers. So at $1.5 million, the minimum down payment is going to be hundred, just under $125,000, which roughly represents 8 point something percent of a down payment. Now you might think you could kind of afford that, but like the qualifications are going to be insane. So we're looking at 4.29% uh, at a 30 year amortization. We're looking at $6,700, close to $6,800 a month, which I guess isn't bad for some people, but for a starter home, that's a lot of money. But the problem is your approximate annual income. You're going to need to have a household income of $254,000, just over that, to qualify for $1.5 million at the very minimum down payment of 8% or so, $125,000. Don't forget you need land transfer taxes. You'll probably have to tack on the CMHC insurance premium onto the mortgage. So you're not going to be able to get just to $1.5 million. It's going to be under that. It is what it is. Toronto is a really expensive market, as you know already. Home ownership is the dream of many people. And I I know you want to just get in, so that's fine. 250000 you might think, how many people actually afford $250,000 household income? Even if two of you are making over $100,000, it'll still be hard to qualify. But the benefit of having this is that you can have guarantors, like maybe your parents or somebody else, a relative or a friend or even an investor. You can have guarantors to help you get over that hurdle just to get into the market and start owning instead of renting. Nothing wrong with it, renting first of all, but also nothing wrong with just scraping by to get in. Payments are going to be a little bit higher, but you have some ownership. And of course, the payments itself of $6,800 after putting $125,000 down is still a lot of money. Don't forget you have more expenses other than that. You also have property taxes, you have maintenance, and you have insurance as well too. So the reason how they calculate $254,000 is that they typically look at your GDS and TDS scores. If you know what that means, I'll go to it briefly, but GDS is your gross debt service. It basically adds up all the mortgage servicing costs, plus the taxes and maintenance and insurance, all that stuff I just mentioned. It takes a rough estimate and it has to be no more than 32% of your gross annual income. So before taxes, before all that stuff, because your tax rates might be a little bit different. So they don't look at net income, they look at gross annual income. And when I say they, I mean the lenders, right? The banks for the underwriters. Um, total debt service generally is about 40 something percent, 42%. I think mortgage brokers will probably correct me anyway. And that's a rough rule of thumb. Talk to your mortgage broker because they can have some exceptions that'll make it work. I did take it a step further and I broke it down by the different types of average prices of what's in the GTA. So the average price in all of the GTA in general is $1.136 million. The average price of a detached home is $1.46 million and semis is $1.1 .1. Townhouse, 920000 and condos, just under 700000 so $694,000. Minimum down payments are outlined here. Let's arrange it by the most expensive to the least expensive, okay? So we have detached, 121000 minimum down payment. You know, if you're just starting out, depending on where you're at in your real estate ownership journey, a condo at $700,000 is pretty reasonable with $44,000 down. That's a 6.4% minimum down payment. Of course, there's actual uh, CMHC premiums, $20,000 for that one. Added to the mortgage is six. $670,000 with the payments all in at 3.99%, uh, you'll get a $3,200 a month carrying costs. Now, if you're just starting out and you're in a one bedroom condo, that seems like a lot because like, maybe your rent's like $2,200, $2,400, which is still a lot of money, don't get me wrong. But if you're looking for a two bedroom, you're not going to find anything for $700,000. Like uh, $700,000 might get you a nice one plus den, maybe with parking, depending on what area you want to be. But it'd be very hard to get a two bedroom unless you're willing to move outside of the Toronto core or you move to like the 905 area or even parts of North York maybe or Scarborough you can you can get something there for sure for 700,000 but let's say you're looking in the Toronto downtown core where the majority of the condo sales are happening you're only going to get a 1 plus 10 so you can rent that same unit for $2400 but here the mortgage payments 
for just limping in with $45,000 plus codes and costs and all that stuff, you're looking at $3,200. Not to mention taxes and maintenance fees, insurance, utilities. Yeah, just the mortgage itself requirement for the payments will be, uh, you'll need a annual gross income of $120,000 or so, just under that. And if you're looking for a move up uh, situation where you're looking to sell your condo or townhouse or whatever, and you wanna to move to a detached home, you're looking at a 1.46 million average purchase price, $121,000 minimum, that's 8.3% 8, 8 or so. You have to pay a CMHC premium of 41,000, which gets tacked onto the mortgage. So you're looking at a mortgage of one point, just under $1.4 million, which it's a lot. So your monthly payments, including the premium will be just under $6,600. And again, you'll have a household income of $250,000 or just under that, which is a lot. But it is what it is. Oh, and the reason why I use 3.99% as the mortgage rates is because, you know, a lot of people think that uh, getting paying the CMHC premium kind of sucks, and it does. But then you'll get cheaper borrowing rates. You'll get the best rates. And the best rates right now are 399 but only for insured mortgages. So keep that in mind. So the best rates you normally get are either when they're insured, meaning that the lender's insured in case the borrower defaults, or if you're a low ratio mortgage, meaning that you're 35% or higher uh, of a down payment. If you're looking at 20% down, which is the conventional mortgage where you don't need to get insurance, you're not required to get insurance anymore, mortgage insurance, so there's no premiums, your rate will be slightly higher. And the rates I'm typically seeing right now are 4.29% for a five-year fixed. Now, obviously, the rates are different, uh, fluctuate a little bit, but we're looking at, okay, so same thing, a detached home, $1.46 million, you're looking at a close to $300,000 down payment for 20% down. Uh, mortgage payments will be $5,800 or so, and the required income is $216,000 for household income. And the condo, you're looking at $694,000 purchase price, average price. Uh, down payment would be $140,000 or so. Mortgage, you're looking at $655,000 with a $2,750 payment, $2,750 a month. Um, the required income, just over $100,000. So you can see how it changes just a little bit, but realistically, not that much. And just to illustrate a little bit more, I did the same example, 20% down for 3.99%, just for bits and giggles. We're looking at the same payments and it just only changes it by like $50 a month. And your required income goes down about three to $6,000 difference depending on what purchase price you're looking at. All that to say is that I don't think the CMHC rules are gonna make that much of a difference, but every little thing helps. And this definitely will help the fringe buyers that are just squeaking by to qualify. It'll help them get into the market. The biggest trend I'm gonna see is that I think there's gonna be more of a shift towards rental demand. Because the qualifications are so high, because purchase prices are so high in Canada because of late stage capitalism, don't hate me, just shoot the messenger, it's just what it is, okay? Prices are high here and they're not gonna come down anytime soon. As much as you want it to, it's just, it's not, okay? It's come down 20% from the peak. Okay, well, it's gonna be made up quite significantly, really rapidly in 2027. That's my prediction anyway. Because look, they're not building any more supply. Actually, I'll get into that later on. But for the first part, my point number two is that the shift in rental demand is gonna happen sooner rather than later. There's gonna be more and more renters. Right now, we're at a low point of renters, uh, rental demand, because there's a lot of supply, supply shock of all the new construction stuff coming on. But like, try finding something for rent for a house, for a good area. It's not that easy finding rentals. It's it's gonna get harder and harder. And you remember those days. You know, we do over 100 leases a year because we have a property management company. We have a leasing company as well, too. We're seeing a lot of demand in the rental applications now. A lot more applicants now, anyway, compared to sales. Because actually, we have some properties that are for sale and for lease. I'm seeing a lot more showing activity and offer activity for rentals as compared to purchasing. That's just anecdotal evidence. It's just what I see. Back to what I was saying, supply is gonna take a major hit. It's already been taking a major hit since 2022 because there have been no pre-sales happening since the rate hikes started happening in 2022. And to get high-rise inventory, it takes about five years to get something off the ground and sold, right? Like a couple years to sell it, then the zoning approval, actually first of all zoning approvals then selling it and then construction right so all in all it takes about five years nothing's being sold since 2022 so nothing gets built and nothing gets built add five years to that we're looking at 2027 and onwards for at least two years so 27 to like 2029 20, maybe even 2030 definitely no supply and i don't i can't see 2025 all of a sudden pre-sales market coming back just like that because there's gonna be a lot of resale inventory that needs to be absorbed a lot of new inventory that just came onto the market as the rates drop the resale market will be better which will then eventually spin off the pre-sales market but for now we're at all-time lows for sales of pre-sale condos or inventory. Not even just condos, like houses for that matter. There just won't be the supply to meet the demand that's already backlogged as it is. So yes, you might say that demand is getting tighter because of immigration cuts and you know political pressure and stuff like that. But like if you think about it, there's gonna be a new government coming from any time from like now till like October, let's say spring to October. So sometime next year, there's gonna be a new government. 
Will they be able to pause immigration? Like at some point, yes, the labor market is flooded right now. There's a lot of job applicants and not a lot of jobs out there because the economy is kind of bad. But eventually it's all a cycle. The economy will turn around, jobs will be in demand again, and we're going to need cheap labor. I mean, essentially that's what new immigrants provide, right? So we're going to need immigration again. Our declining birth rates are happening. You could see all the baby boomers are all retiring. And so we have to import all our people. So it can't be that immigration will be at zero forever, especially with new policies, uh, new political powers coming in place. So I think in time that will have some sort of impact. And the fifth thing I'm going to see is, of course, economic uncertainty. Right now, we're really uncertain times with interest rates, with inflation, with Trump getting in, with his tariffs and uh, all inflationary policies for Canada, which means that the Bank of Canada has a tough decision on their hands. Either they crash the economy by keeping interest rates high, or they let in inflation run wild by dropping rates, right? We'll see what they have to do. The next rate cut is coming in December 11th, and then a few more in the following year as well too. Um, but we're all predicted that the rates will come down to the neutral rate, whatever that means, you know, 2.75, 2.5% for the overnight rate in June 2025. It's a long way away. We'll see what happens. At some point, rates will come down and stabilize. Like right now, where the rates are, is still restrictive to the economy. Real estate still doesn't make sense at these high interest rates. If you drop it even by 1%, it starts making sense again, right? So instead of the 4%, we're in the threes or twos again, then all of a sudden, you know, in the past, it went kind of crazy and it still will go crazy in my opinion. So I think another 1% drop would make a huge difference to the real estate market. Hold on to that. I think in mid 2025, we'll probably get there. To get ahead of it, like we know the rate cuts are coming in June and July and onwards, or well, actually steadily from then to then. If we know that by spring or summer, the market's gonna kind of set the ground for some sort of boom again, definitely by 2027 where there's no supply, I think there'll be a boom. A lot of people that are on the fence of selling, they could potentially wait till the spring because, you know, it's always traditionally the best time to sell. But I'm just thinking like every January, there's always like January and early February, there's a boom of a window of a market where there's no supply and there's still buyers out there. Put yourself in the perspective of a buyer. It's a new year, New Year's over celebrations, and you're thinking of making that move finally. If you're out there shopping and you're just kind of watching the market, if you find a good deal, you're going to snag it. So if you've been trying to sell last year and you're trying to think of putting something back in the market, I'd say don't wait till spring because there's gonna be a lot of flood of people trying to sell at the same time. I think maybe you can get ahead of that. Try going in January or February. I mean, I have a property I'm gonna put on the market in January. So uh, look out for that if you see it. I think there might be an opportunity just beating the competition and putting your property on the market in January. Might not be a bad strategy. So in conclusion, I think times are a little bit rough for real estate holders right now. But I think by 2027, supply is gonna be low or non-existent actually. Immigration will be strong or relatively balanced again, and there still will be demand. And let's face it, there's been three decades of imbalance anyway. Like there hasn't been enough supply. That's why prices are so high. The affordability crisis of housing is not something that can get solved overnight. It's going to take a long time to do it. People are saying at least a decade. So I think you still have some runway in 2027. Mark my words will be in the next boom. Of course, not financial advice. This is just what my opinion is. Uh, every situation is different. Call me if you want to have some advice, if you want to actually talk about it. But the simplest way and the most efficient way is to book an appointment by clicking the link below. At least my schedule will be proper. At least you can find a time that's suitable for you. But if you're not ready to make a call, just subscribe to my channel and then you'll keep up to date with the stuff I'm talking about. And hopefully we'll meet at some point in the future. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Add it up. Thanks for sticking out to the very end. I hope you got some value out of this. Do me a favor, please press like and subscribe, but more than anything, leave me some feedback so we know what to produce for you going forward. Thanks again.